Hey guys, it's Madison. Thanks for joining me in this faithful home. I'm so glad that you guys checked back for another Sewing Saturday video. I am really excited to continue on with this series on my channel. For today's sewing video, I am going to be showing you how I sewed this adorable reversible baby bonnet. It is super cute, super easy to make. I absolutely love the detailing of the contrasting fabrics. It's really easy and cute, and let me tie it up for you guys. Come on guys, look, just look how adorable that is. That would look super cute on your little one. This would make for a great Christmas present since Christmas is coming up soon, or it would be great for in the summertime. It's pretty well versatile. A baby can wear a baby bonnet all year round, keep their ears warm in the winter, or keep their face out of the sun in the summer. So I'm super excited to show you guys this tutorial. I hope you guys are as well. If you are new to my channel, I make Christian homemaking videos, lifestyle content, and anything DIY related. So if any of that interests you, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button so you feel welcomed into this faithful home with me. Without further ado, let's make this adorable baby bonnet. The first thing that I need to do for this baby bonnet is prep and iron all of the material. I chose to do a burnt orange and a burnt orange and red striped material, something that coordinates together. Now I need to cut out our pattern pieces, and if you are curious what those triangles are, they're actually fabric weights to help me cut out the fabric without it moving around. For this project, you will need two of the head pieces as well as one long rectangle for each of your fabrics that you choose, and I will make sure to leave the pattern list down in the description box below. I found it from Pinterest for free, so I will make sure to link that for you guys. Here I am taking the long rectangle and I'm kind of laying it around the longer side of the headpiece and then you want to pin it. This will give the hat more of its dimension. It's a little bit tricky to do the pinning, so bear with yourself if you are new to this style. You want to keep the hat piece flat and then kind of curve that rectangle around it and then give it a nice top stitch. Make sure you start and stop at the beginning and the end of it so that you lock your stitches in. And then taking the other piece, you want to do the same thing. I will mention on here, if you are doing this with a patterned piece, you wanna make sure that your right sides are together. And so when you are looking at it now, the nice part of the fabric is on the inside and you are pinning the wrong sides. So you want to make sure that you're doing that. I know it's hard to see here because it is a solid piece. But we are going to then stitch again all the way around, making sure that you are not accidentally stitching your top fabric. And then once I finish here, you will see its full shape and it will make a lot more sense to you guys. So this is what it's looking like once you turn it right side out. You can start to see the bonnet coming to life. And you do want to make sure that you do this with both your inner and your other piece, like I did here. So there you can see that the material is right sides together. And here I'm going back and trimming off the excess material from my seam allowance. I like to sew with a quarter to three eighths seam allowance to make sure that the fabrics both meet but then go back through and cut off the excess. That way when I put it together, the bonnet is not bulky. So this is what both of them look like. You wanna have your solid piece turned right side out and then keep your other one right side in so that basically you are sandwiching together both wrong sides of the fabric. And then we are going to pin across the entire thing to hold them together.
It may seem a little bit weird that we are pinning it straight together and not doing it right sides together right now because it is reversible, but once we add the binding to it, which we will do here in a minute, it will all make sense. So first, let's go ahead and do a nice top stitch around the entire thing to hold both of the fabric pieces in place. And again, here you can really see it starting to take shape, so you can go back and cut off your excess seam allowance if you want. You don't have to, but I will be doing that off camera. Just make sure that you don't accidentally cut into your thread. I mentioned the binding earlier, so here we are going to make basically a bias tape, except we don't need to worry about it being actually on the legitimate bias fold. But basically you want to cut a piece of material that is two inches wide, and then for this one, the little piece is about nine inches long. It's the length of the bottom part of the bonnet, and then the longer piece is an inch and a half wide and then it's 42 inches long. This will be for the other part of the bonnet and then as well as the ties to go down. So you want to make sure that you fold it in half and then fold each of the two sides into that middle seam and then from there you will fold it in half again so it makes a perfectly finished edge that we are going to loop around our raw edge that we had earlier. So this is what I'm talking about here. We are going to start with the smaller bias tape piecing. We are going to loop it around that raw edge on both sides of the bonnet, pinning it down and then pinning it all the way across the bottom shorter edge of your material. And I went ahead and made this piece a little bit longer than I needed to and then once I pinned it all down, I cut off the excess. You don't have to worry about it being a finished seam right now because the other piece that we put will finish all of it. So go ahead and do a top stitch along this line. And for some reason my camera decided not to record, I've been having problems today, so here is what it looks like once you do the final top stitch. And then we will go in with the larger piece. So what you want to do is fold your bias in half so that you find the middle and then take that middle and hook it to the middle of your bonnet and then pin it in place. Then I pulled the piece to one edge of it and pinned at the corner and then worked my way back up around the bonnet pinning it every so often so it stays in place. And then repeating this on the other side I will lay it down find the end of it and fold our bias tape along and pin it down. Basically what you are doing is trapping in your raw edge with this bias tape so it creates a nice finished seam without having to roll over the bonnet a bunch of times. Plus now you can continue on and see the long strings that we will have to use as the ties. So now you will need to take a top stitch along the entire thing and of course my camera decided not to record this earlier so here I will pretend to do it for you guys that way you see what I mean. We want to start with one edge of the string. Okay I do need to stop for a second and show you guys something really important that did not get recorded when my camera messed up and that is folding in the edge of your material on your strap so make sure you open your bias looping back up. You fold over the material in about a half an inch and then refold it back together. Now you can see here that it has a finished edge when you are stitching the final step. So make sure you do that and again sorry that my camera glitched and I did not get that original footage for you guys. Set it down and do a top stitch along the entire piece all the way around the bonnet and then back over to the other side of the string. And then make sure that you fold in the edge just like I showed in that clip earlier.
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and how this little reversible baby bonnet turned out. I think it is super cute and I literally can't wait to have kids one day so that I can dress them up in all of the things that I sew. It may be a little while, but I can still prep and prepare for when I do have kids one day. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up and comment down below what kind of sewing project you want me to do on another Sewing Saturday video. If you want to see the rest of the ones that are in this series, I already have one more on this channel, so make sure to check down in the description box below. I will leave the playlist for all of the Sewing Saturday videos. I am so, so thankful for the support that you guys have shown me on this channel. It really does mean so much to me. If you aren't already subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button so you feel welcomed into this faithful home with me. I post videos every Wednesday and Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern, so I will check back with you guys in another video soon. Bye, guys!